Hello and thank you for joining the Thursday edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayodele Uzubaku. Today on the program, police officer killed, 23 abducted in attacks on Kaduna communities as Progressive Governors Forum attacks governors, other elites who support bandits, FIRS writes National Assembly seeks exclusive power on value-added tax and later on the show, NDLEA arrests one Arrest one seized narcotic in a papa pots concealed in rotors worth six billion naira from Lebanon. I'll be hanging out with Lekon Shote and Tony Waji. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. We we'll start the program today in a, with a very interesting one here. Just breaking now is that Lagos State House of Assembly has finally passed the bill on value added tax VAT and anti open grazing bills into law. No, that bill has passed the Lagos House of Assembly. It will be sent to the governor for accent any moment of, uh, from now. So the Speaker of the State House of Assembly, that's right, Honorable Mudashiro Obasa, has directed the clerk to send uh, the bill to the governor of Lagos State. That any moment from now, we expect that um, Governor Babajide Songolu will be signing that anti-open grazing bill into law. This is, um, this is getting traction. The South South, the Southern Governors, you don't forget, Lagos is the permanent headquarters mm -hmm. for the uh, Southern Governors Forum. <laughs> well, that verdict was reached in their last me meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, right now, everybody, they, are, they seem to be in the same page talking about this anti open grazing law. Well, my, I may not be answering the question I think you are asking me. My take is beyond that. It's that we are finally finding our voices as a federation. States are now asserting the fact that they are federating units and not just mere creations of the federal government. You know, we are jettisoning the uh, unitary federal system that the army imposed on us, and we are beginning to find our voices. That, that for me, is a bigger take, beyond the fact of checking the violence that comes with open grazing, the destruction of farm crops, even kidnapping that goes with it, killing of people. I, need, I think I've told you once that the daughter of uh, Pa Fashionati and her husband and I were in a hotel we went for some ceremony you know, for about four days and for us to disperse on sunday afternoon and then for her to be killed mm. on friday after that you, you went to you you, attended the same event yes so you can imagine somebody that you saw that you related with and then suddenly you disperse on sunday and then on friday you are told she was shot dead by people presumed to be headsmen or something you know so beyond that is that nigeria is becoming more assertive i wish we can go beyond that we have ebom air why can't state governments have their own oil companies now why can't they go beyond acting as if they are afraid of the federal government we are no longer in a, in a military system let's begin to assert ourselves let's begin to show that this is a federal system and then we run it like that. Tony hmm. Waji, this um, development, we, uh, Governor Luaro Timakredolu signed his own, and there are some states that they've signed that um, bill into law. Um, state like Benway State before now, have signed, and I think Ekiti State and some other states, I know that they have this anti open grazing law, and some other states are now towing that path. And at the end of the day, people want to look ultimately the southern governors, they will be singing with one voice that they want to stop open grazing. But this is not in sync with what the federal government is proposing. 
It's not about. It's not about the prior government improvement is proposing. It's about um, you know something leads to something. Before we got here, something happened. Before we start talking about anti-open grazing law, it didn't just happen overnight. And the lackadaisical attitude of the federal of the or the center made this possible because people for you a made while inevitable. yes made it inevitable. Mm. People for a while were crying for help. Things were happening. Mm. I mean, a situation. Um, I, I don't want to go into all those details, but let me just a situation whereby you use your own business to disrupt mine. Mm. We not all go well for development. This is Nigeria. This is a federating. We have states, like more like a, fed, a, a federating unit. And then some people are engaged in a particular business, and you use that particular business to make my own business. I mean, I mean, it doesn't work. So now we have the the issue now is that states are beginning to rise up. This is what we've been agitating for. Let's all take federal out of it. Do we need it? Yes. I'm happy a state like Lagos State, for instance, and River State are rising. These are two heavy states in Nigeria. If these two states are rising up and promulgating a law to back up this, I think it's a new day. I see federalism creeping up in a subtle manner. And that is what Nigeria wants. Uh, a state should be able the to... judiciary do. trying to restructure... No. Or restructuring taking place through this... I, I, I <laughs> like it. Let, let, let it be coming in bits. Mm. Like, it, it, you know, it tells you that we cannot fight it for too long. If it's something that will happen, it will happen. And it is happening now. I'm happy because, of course, you know, Lagos has been a trailblazer in a lot of things. Taking this step, I see other states taking... I mean, if you cannot... As a state, for, for instance, le I don't want to go on the FR, um, Federal Inland Revenue um, issue because we'll, it's a topic we'll that will come it. later. Mm. Okay, let's on this anti grazing law. It's time. I am happy that the certain state, certain states stood up and they maintained that position. I salute the governor of Ondo State because he set, he set the pace and he stood by it. It's, it's a new day. This is how, for me, Nigeria can make progress. Depending on, on the center, I mean, it can, it's not, it has never worked. It's not working, but so uh, we must change it. A group uh, in Miyati Allah, they are saying that the federal government should, uh, that they should appeal to some of the states to halt the signing of this bill into law that is not in everybody's interest. I, do you want me to laugh or? Are you pulling my leg? No, I, wanted, I want you to speak like a journalist, <laughs> somebody from the south. Listen, my understanding is that Mieti Allah is a trade group and is also a lobby group. So whatever they have seen is just an opinion. They do not have legislative or judicial or executive powers to do anything. What a, that is the best they can do. And maybe they are playing on the fact that the president happens to be one of the trustees of MacBan. And so they want to play that hand. If they want to complete, complete, push that forward, they are just looking for the trouble of other parts of Nigeria. Don't forget, there are other, don't forget that even the governor of Ondo State has replied. And Governor Autumn has also replied. So all this is just, um, how do you say it? They're just finding a way to come back, to stage a comeback. This one is done. It's a done deal. They should just forget it. And either stay where they, they are allowed to mm -hmm. be doing their opening, open grazing, or conform. Somebody says that a priest came to who was in Venice, their mass was always in the evening. And then he came to Rome, and they woke him up, they said, we are going to mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. a mass in the morning. And then he said, no, when we are in, he said, no, when you are in Rome, you, you behave like, like Romans. So when you are in Southern Nigeria, behave 
like Southern Nigerians. It's yeah, as simple, simple as that. Hmm. So, the done deal, I want to congratulate so Right Honorable Buddha Sri Robasa and uh, members of Lagos House of Assembly. And by extension, we hope that Governor Babajide Songolu, any moment yeah, we from now, will yeah. sign this bill into yeah. law. Now, the case of insecurity in Nigeria can sometimes be likened to a mirage. The closer you get to it, the further it seems. A mobile police inspector has been killed by bandits while 23 people were abducted following attacks on some communities in Chikun, local government area of Kaduna State in the early hours of Wednesday. Meanwhile, the Director General of the Progressive Governors Forum has launched a cutting attack on APC governors and some elites who are allegedly supporting bandits. Tony, <coughs> Kaduna... Kaduna again, <laughs> and um, we just we know that in a matter of days or months they'll catch up with these guys and um, they'll be brought to justice. I'm happy, you know. I um I saw uh, um what the Nigerian military is doing currently doing. I mean, um, attacking the cells of these uh, bandits. We've waited for this for too long mm, for and I'm so happy it's eventually happening and I hope they sustain it they sustain it they, s they should sustain it and get to the bottom of it the sponsors the financiers of this evil act need to be get, you know you know, we need to get them and give them a public trial we need the political will as I said I'm happy it's happening now sustainability of that action it's what matters to me most and really, um, and those governors uh, who, are, who proposed rehabilitation, um, I mean, of confessed bandits or terrorists, I have issues with them. I have issues with them. Um, we cannot operate a system like this. It has happened for a long time. We know these people, we have it because a situation why, where some people come into a community and kidnap hundreds of people and disappear into thin air and hold them ransom for months and people are paying ransom, taking ransom to them and they go scot free. I mean, it's, 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 it only encourages such habits. I hope the federal government really mean business this time. If they mean business, Nigerians will support them wholeheartedly. But any other thing, any other thing that is negative to this, please, I want to beg the federal government. Earlier in the week. I, I, sorry, uh, okay. I want to beg the federal government to ensure the sustainab sustainability of this military action. I hope they will not stop. We will get to the bottom. They must locate the financiers, the sponsors. Do, there, are, there, was, there was a time the Minister of Justice earlier this year said mm. they've been able to get some BDC operators who are, who are funding this operation, banditry and terrorism in Nigeria. Mm. We want those names. We, want, we, we, want, we don't want to. We want to, we want to know them. We mm. want, they must reveal. They, they need to be unveiled. If progress must be made. It's not about shooting into the forest. We need to get there are some people behind the curtain. Please, let's know them. People behind, you know people behind the curtain. And um, a lot of Nigerians, they've suffered from um, this uh, activities of these bandits. Now, the new style is not even on highways again. Now, it's to go inside the Into homes and pick them up and abduct them and hold them for days, weeks, months. And some, they will even, <laughs> in spite of the fact of paying the ransom, they will even kill the victim after even paying the ransom. Ayo, the governor of Katsina State, the home state of Mr. President. Mr. President, said that, I remember seeing him on television saying that, isn't it ironic that the victims, most of the victims of this thing are from the north? The government is, the federal government is headed by a northerner. Mm -hmm. Those who head 
the security operators in Nigeria are from the north. And then those who perpetrate this crime are mostly also from the north. Then you ask me, what, where, what am I leading to? We have something that some people might call groupthink. If the topmost echelon of the security architecture of this country, if there are 17 security architecture, I mean agencies in this country, and 15 of them are headed by people from a particular part of the country, you are likely to have groupthink, agreement without or consent or assent without necessarily saying support me, because of the fact of your socioeconomic so, or sociocultural upbringing, your thinking will be alike and the same. Mr. President needs to dilute this so that you have more plural, pluralism of opinion, opinion when they are forming, making decisions regarding the security of this country so that people will no longer be have, I mean, we've heard people say that some people with some commanders will see if it is true that some commanders will tell some soldiers, you are shooting, you are killing our people too much. That tells you that this problem of groupthink, we need to check it mm -hmm. by ensuring that the, the, the topmost echelon, the commanders and the rest of them, are people from diverse parts of this country, so that nobody can hide behind and be uh, condoning um, the excesses of bandits or insurgents because we have the same religion, we have the same language, we have the same orientation, we have the same cultural orientation and the rest of them. There is need for us to move past this. That is a strategic move. Buying equipment is not mm -hmm. enough. Getting to Kano aircraft or whatever aircraft is not enough. We need to go beyond mm -hmm. that. And then the American ambassador who says she's going to name, mm -hmm. why is mm -hmm. she just taunting us? It, yeah. She should just say it. What is the big deal? Why are you acting as if you are, you are teasing us? Mm. If, if indeed she knows, let them tell us. <laughs> well, uh, the Director General of Progressive Governors Forum has um, launched a kind of skating attack on APC governors and some elites supporting who are allegedly supporting bandits. Mm -hmm. I have not listened to any governor. I don't think any governor will declare support for bandits. You know, I, I guess what it has to do with earlier support for bandits. Okay. You know, we have, the, the records are there where some governors go into this forest to meet with them and then have put to ops. I mean, we've seen Many, I don't want to mention and the them. human GPRS that goes and meets and them. And then, uh, particularly, you know, you know, no, the, yeah, as then of then that time, people, the yeah, so a kind of amnesty program. That, that was, that was mm -hmm. where this thing started. Anybody who has killed, raped, maimed, kidnapped any innocent Nigerian, for me, anybody who supports amnesty, rehabilitation, in whatever gap, should not be taken seriously. People like that shouldn't be in the system. The way, and some of these but governors the were started it. The of governable for this yeah. governors in some of these governors started it. They started it. They were meeting with them. They know them. They were even negotiating, begging them to stop. That was where this must stop. Of course. They would think they, were, they are beyond the state. I mean, they, they, they have the capacity to turn a, a whole state that upside down. They gave them that, that, those kind of powers. Mm -hmm. So it. It's now later in the day that we realize that it was a mistake. Those governors, we know them. It was a big blunder on their part. It was a big blunder. We know them. You know, you know what I'm saying. I don't want to mention them. So the mistake they made earlier is what we are fighting today. Doing the right thing from the beginning matters a lot. Everything is on politics, tribal, whatever. When something is wrong, you tackle it. But in Nigeria, we play politics a lot of things. Politics because of votes. If somebody misbehaves, you deal with the person squarely, no matter who the person is. Otherwise, we continue to make, I mean, all this circle movement and we won't make any progress. Mm -hmm. We know our problem until we stand up and have the political way to deal with it. These are, this, this, people are talking about this so-called insurgent terrorism and what, band, band, banditry. These, they are not spirits. These are individuals. Gumi many times met them. He met, and he's saying that this, whatever government is, this attack by government is not going to work. 
What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? We know where we can get to these people. We are not serious. That's why I say, I hope they can sustain it. I know what I'm saying earlier. Because this guy is saying, this, this attack by the federal government on the bandits cannot work. He said it, and I'm expecting by now, somebody ought to have been arrested. Give us information. It's like you know so much. Can we have it? I mean, what? I mean, until these things are done. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know, maybe the, the use of force ultimately is necessary. Quell this menace. I'm looking at the other side of it. What gave room to bandits, well, banditry? What uh, allowed that industry to start thriving? What are those things government will need to address? If you go up north, when you see the number of unemployed youth, unemployed youths, if you see some governed spaces all over the, the, the north, and people that don't even have hope for tomorrow, that they're all over the place. As you can see, I'm shaking my leg. I had an audience with a former governor, and I asked him a question that we have some countries that are mainly Muslim and their people are middle class. What happened to northern Nigeria that is not even entirely Muslim? And we have this kind of issues. The indirect answers I got is like, there's no point, we, we will not, it doesn't pay us to educate these people, train them so well, so that they can be useful to themselves. We'd rather have them the way they are. Not in so much explicit terms, but that I understood where he was going. That so that when they need them to, to die for them or something. Deploy them. See, you have 19 states in the north. Let's be clear about We're something. Talking as if this is deliberate. Listen, we have mm -hmm. 19 states in the north. We have foreign 30 something local government in the north. I'm trying to tell you that when revenue allocation is made, most of it goes to the north. Now, another governor asked them to take me around his state. I saw fine roads, I saw shopping malls, I saw bridges, mm. and so on. I say, these shopping malls, how long have you built them? Maybe one year or two years. Why don't you allocate them? He said they didn't come. The people that you don't train, that are not able to make well, use of those facilities, people. haven't you just wasted money? Hmm. The money should have been spent on the money. There's, on the people, there's something that is supposed to have been done, something like a Marshall Plan, such that you said it is time for us to f devote our resources into the education and training of our people. So that they are the ones that will be even be demanding for infrastructure because they will be too, <coughs> their energy will be, they will, be, they will want to go. They will be rearing to go. But you just be lost. Don't forget the former um, Emir of uh, Kano who said, you are building railway line. You know. For who? It's just for elite to go and make uh, Christmas, I mean, just enjoying themselves. The people don't need it. You have not trained those mm -hmm. people. This Listen, let's be, let's be realistic. Let's talk to ourselves in this country. The northern political establishment, the northern oligarchy needs to take responsibility for their people. You can't have so much money and it ends in the pockets mm -hmm. of individuals. Mm -hmm. It should be invested Bega, in the people I'll, of the, of, okay, of, of the, me, the masses Bega is of the people. Us from Abuja. Let me take this call. Uh, good evening, Ayo. Good evening, Bega. Yes. I want to talk about this uh, anti-grazing law that was pa just passed. Yes. Uh, it's, a, it's a good thing that happened there. The United States has done it, so others still will join. And the team need to look at what the content of the law. Is it friendly to the headers? When I mean headers, not only any tribes. Because if you ban anti-open uh, grazing without adequate infrastructure, it's a call for anarchy. Like in Lagos State there, I'm, I, I, I've lived in Lagos before, you've had many parks being controlled by government. The same to have a private park, like AKC and the rest of it, built by individuals. People will say government has no, nothing to do with private business. The government has uh, uh, in a, a labor market there, was do by government. 
the uh, trade fair company by government and people are occupying it. The legal will look at it to create a, a, a infrastructure with modern equipment that will make head, uh, head, uh, headers comfortable and also clean shame value in the area of gallery, uh, uh, in the area of uh, skin, tannery, and there's of thing there that will create jobs for the youth, touch into it, and make it a modern one that will attract investors to even invest in it so that Lagos can generate the revenue from it. They have the population. They have the population, and it's be a big thing in this country if you can mechanize uh, I mean, ranches that will attract your investors. All and right, make we'll to leave there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your contribution. Gentlemen, breaching long stretch on this. Tony, ultimately, we are looking that so look, this thing should have a timeline, and with the onslaught against them, I'm confident that in no time, yeah, they must have a timeline. We are going to just mm -hmm. get this era over with, mm -hmm. and Nigeria is going to be back. Mm -hmm. We are going to have our country again. Amen. Amen. That's a prayer. Everybody wants a peaceful country. Everybody wants a peaceful country. You want to, to, Lagos, to, you want to tra to travel by road, not by flying all the time. You you can, a lot of people don't like flying. Too. You want to travel by in the night during the day. Any time of the day, you want to travel in peace. Even not in the north, even within the southern states. We still have it. If they can sustain it, I know why I'm, I'm using that word. If they can sustain it, not because we're approaching election year. Continue on that momentum. Sustain it. Deal with these people. Bring them, bring them out to the public. Let us see them. Shame them. Name them and let us know them. It's, it's issue of, I mean, because I know, I know, mm. I know the government, they know these people. Mm. I mean, if you don't bring them out and give them public shame, this thing will continue to happen. It's not about catching those people on, I mean, the, the ones in the, in the field. Somebody, who are those people buying those arms? Who are those people, I mean, Making those things operation possible. I mean, you can't just hold some. some now, um, like a state in Zamfara, for instance, has been shut down. You cannot communicate mm. phones and you whatever. You can't even make phone calls. Schools. Yeah, but you have schools. other satellite phones. They can afford to buy it. So who are those buy, people funding it? buy it to Raya. Yeah, who are those mm. people funding? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a large-scale business. All right. Get those people until we get them. How about bumping? We'll take this break. When we come back, we talk about... FIRS versus River State. We'll be right back after this time out. Please stay with us. Welcome back. It's a journalist hangout, and I have Lee Konshote and Tony Waji still in the studio. Now, it looks like the drum beat of war is sounding between the Federal Inland Revenue Services, FIRS, and state governors over autonomy regarding collection of value-added tax, VAT. In a desperate bid to retain its power over the VAT collection, first as written to the National Assembly, seeking inclusion of vast collection in the exclusive legislative lists. The agency is also requesting the lawmakers to approve establishment of the Federal Revenue Court of Nigeria. Nico, let me start from you. Let me start with you here. I think this is like a very desperate measure. Now, the origin of this thing is that uh, it's a River State went to court, and River State had won the first round, and then um, the judge. Hmm? The, 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 the FIRS appealed, and then the court said, "Hold on, let's conclude this first." Yes. So, already, the River State is even talking about they've started, they've yeah. gone ahead to start collecting, the, yes. this, the, saying that there's no um, stay of execution to, that the um, Federal Inland Revenue Service, they've not um, taken the uh, stay of execution to that, uh, obtained the stay of execution to that judgment. Mm -hmm. But to simplify it to the layman on the street, ultimately, this is like restructuring some people see it as restructuring through the judiciary. Yeah. They're trying to normalize in the abnormally. And um, I read it the pages of the newspaper today that say a certain commissioner in Gombe State was actually you know, begging the Southern States or some other state that we should be our brother's, brother's keeper, keeper. that uh, 
this should not be you know implemented that if it's implemented that it's not going to be in the interest of everybody Ayo, let, let me try and bring some perspective into this there is company law i mean company income tax company income tax is derived after you look at your revenue and remove all your operating costs whatever remains you pay company tax to and it is a federal government that receives company tax but VAT, just like sales tax, is on the consumer. Individuals pay personal income tax to states. So sales tax or VAT should be part of your personal tax, not company tax. It just happens to be that companies are collection agencies. Luckily, for you, Ayo, I'm an accountant, so I can explain it. Mm. I buy something from you for 100 naira. We negotiate. You remove, there's something called withholding tax. But there's also, when, you are pay, when I'm paying you, there's 15% with, um, withholding tax. But we're talking about VAT now. I will have to pay you 100 and seven naira fifty kobo. What belongs to you is the hundred naira. The seven naira fifty is just for you to hold. You are supposed to pay it to the government. Now, supposing you also went to buy something from somebody else, and then he charges you for 10 naira maybe you bought whatever you bought was for 20 naira and then he asks you to you he charges you 100 200 naira and you pay him is 200 naira he now say but you are going to pay 15 naira but. for that mm. okay so that 15 naira you you pay your 15 naira to him now you deduct the 750 that I paid to you. Do you understand? So that at the end of the day, he is, they are just transferring. They are just collection points. It is not based on the business that the company does. It is a consumption task. Okay, let me just hold you on there and let me pick this call from. Okay. Abu is calling us from Kano. Thank you, Abu. Yeah, thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Ayo Dele. Good evening, Abu Baka. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, one of the major problems we are having while we are having this crisis of uh, AFRS is the fact that, uh, you know, our law makes... Yeah, good evening. Go ahead. You're live. Okay, so, you know, one of the problems is that um, our law-making process from the National Assembly is very, very faulty. When they enact an act, to establish a it is expected that they will have to look at the constitution to see if provisions of that act run contrary to the constitution and where it does they have to amend the constitution in order to bring it uh, you know at par so that there will not be conflict between that act and the constitution and this is this deficiency in our national assembly law making process is what has created this crisis you will remember that in 2015 we had the administration of criminal justice act 2015 mm. which states that uh, you know a job if it's being promoted it can conclude on a case before being briefed before going to the higher uh, you know court where it's being promoted to but the court you know oh, lost a good so, so summary to not to waste time is that the companies are mere collection points they are, it is not the companies that is paying the tax. Company, the company tax goes to federal government. Individual tax goes to the states. Just the same way your payee that your employer deducts, they pay to the state. It's the same way sales tax should go. But in 1993, when we had this law, we had a unitary system. 
if you like a we'll military, see how the a, a military <laughs> system do you understand you know and uh, even there was a fault in the 1979 constitution, uh, constitution which was not even amended in the 1999 constitution do you understand? And that is why they are talking about Section 58, the stamp duty. Mm -hmm. What is the stamp duty again? Do you understand? Now, but beyond this is that the law, the tax is not being paid by companies. Let's get that one right. It is individual consumers that are paying it, and it's a sales tax. Whatever name it is called. VAT, sales tax, or whatever it is, it is a sales tax paid by individuals. So it should go to the states. And then the, the thing that the FIRS is trying to do now, asking for a VAT court, <laughs> is administrative. And the danger in an administrative court is that you cannot really quite... No, before we appeal before it in the sense look that look on, it is that same there. way. It is that it is that VAT that will determine whether you can appeal or not. Before we go to this court thing, FIRS they are going to the National Assembly, asking to be listed mm -hmm. as part of Excuse those me. items, sixty-eight items in the exclusive lists, so that it's going to be you know, in the purview of the federal government. So states will not drag it mm -hmm. them into not being the <laughs> concurrent. For, F, for FRS or FIRS. And to be they have a case in courts. Are they preempting that case? Okay, I'm telling you. Okay, the exactly. Case and everything. Uh, so, uh -huh. Why not wait for that, you know, that case in court? For me, FR, FIRS um, appears to me like uh, a case of someone who has lost the case and is doing everything possible to retain yeah in, in in other ways to retain i mean rushing you have a case in court and you're approaching the national assembly at the same time doesn't yeah. make sense to me i listened to the governor of river state he made he's a lawyer himself and so he understands this thing very well um if there's a lacuna you know and the state government noticed it and they cashed in on it and the judgment of the court and they rely on the judgment of the court the court says the state has the capacity to collect the vat collect vats what we're waiting for fra um, federal inland revenue service to do now is to go to that same court first of all they appeal the uh, appeal the, the appeal the judgment which they've done and then, but I think about them, the, the, the appeal court, um, the judge, what the justice saw, or sorry, or something, um, um, still, gave, uh, F, um, still gave the state government, I mean, the, the leeway. So, bottom line is this the state government, the state has the capacity to collect VAT. If you, if some state for a while now has been funding, other states in Nigeria. Let's, let's just break it down that way. Some states has been funded, apart from VAT, apart, let's just put VAT by the corner. I see federalism taking shape in this, in these guys. It's coming, in a, in, it's coming gradually. That is what Nigerians have been yearning for. Mm -hmm. A situation whereby some strong, financially strong states keep taking care of some states that cannot sustain itself financially has to stop. A situation whereby we create states so that they can leverage on the strength of other states to sustain or to, to, to grow cannot. Any state that, that relies on other states to grow cannot. And this issue of you don't want certain things in your state but you want it in other states cannot continue you rely on it from other states you rely on the funds from other states things you don't want in your state mm -hmm. you set up agencies of government to go destroying these things but in other states you are cool with it you are cool with the revenue generated 
from that particular I mean it doesn't make sense. I wish I could it, could I don't I don't, I don't want I don't want to uh, okay do I do I break it down? <laughs> I can't. But the issue is this <laughs> we, we cannot make okay. progress in Nigeria. Let, okay. Let's 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 factual. VAT or no VAT it seems to be a VAT or no VAT we this must argument we have to, to be do very it right. controversial. It seems to be very, very, very controversial because um there are some of these items that uh, we gather that Lagos State will make as much as 55% of the amount accru <laughs> accruing to the <laughs> entire country. Look, Ayo, let's not uh, call, let us call a spade a spade. I mean, let us not call it an agricultural implement. You see, in the old, in, in, before the military took over, when you make your money, you keep 50% of it, right? And then you send the remaining. The VAT law says that when you make, take the VAT money to Abuja, you will give 50% to the states. That is why some states who say you cannot consume alcohol in their state, will not take the lion's share of the revenue from sale of, you know, from VAT, from sale of um, alcohol, and then be using it. But my biggest beef is this, Ayo, which I hinted of earlier on, is that the money ends up in the pockets of the oligarchs in these states. It does not go to develop the masses and the people. That is my biggest beef. Okay, I have Alabi calling from Ilori. Thank you for joining us, Alabi. Hello, hello. Yes, go ahead with your contribution, uh, Alabi. Is, uh, Ayo. Yes. And the panel of uh, discussions. You see. Tony Wachi and Liko Yeah, this is a good. Uh, yeah, this is a good uh, omen. The, 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 what's happening now is a good omen. Yeah. This Alabi. Okay. Yeah. So we, we, we need to first understand that that if let's look at let's create you know if in the olden days fifty percent of that comes to me if I make hundred naira fifty naira stays with me but now you said no all the hundred naira must first go to the federal the federal to the to FAC federal government will keep fifteen in the insert of thirty five will now go to states. 35% will go to states. 19 out of 37 states, if you like, because Abuja is a state. Do you understand? 20 will go, portions will go to the north, and then 17 will come to the south. Whereas Lagos alone is giving you about more than 50%, 55% of this thing. This is brazen cheating. Open. Is, is, a, is an open cheating. Now, if somebody now says, let us be our protest keepers, you cannot be insisting on using population to ram down your opinion on some things. And then it now gets to where uh, uh, the tire meets the, the rubber meets the road. You now begin to talk about, um, let us be our protest keeper. When you took are taking advantage of your so-called numbers. You do not remember sentiments to be sentimental at that time. You do not remember that we are brothers. You took fullest advantage. And now some people are now saying, you know, you cannot rob Peter to pay Paul. You now start talking about, um, let us now be our, co our brothers. Uh, Tony, ultimately, I think we should wait for, um, we should see this through going to the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court, and I see this, the final uh, habit of this will be in the, the court. Supreme Court. I and pray, I what, pray. Whatever the pronouncement they make on this will just be the mm. law. But right now, it seems FIRC, they are running from pillar mm. to post. I, 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 people like Wiki, mm, you saw Wiki. It's, 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 it's very much, it's, it's I was on told, it. I read it, on the, I don't know how true it is, that the last couple of days that he has even made four billion naira from, mm -hmm. from, from birth, his collection, collection. From, well, yeah, tax it's in it, his states. See, what is not good is not good. We won't say because it's been long, we've been doing it that way, let's sustain it. 
if it's not good, we want to change in the country. And if they say that yeah. Lagos, it will you can, you can imagine Lagos, I mean, deciding how to, 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 to disbust the bags the themselves. See, the truth is, it's been happening for a long time. Let, let's be, if you want real change in this country, we must, be, we must speak truth to power. We must be able to say it from it and not pretend about it. That it has been happening for ages doesn't make it right. Mm -hmm. If you are reali realizing now that it has not paid us, it has not brought development to the people, and, we, and it, the time is now for us to correct it, I see no big deal. Mm -hmm. We should do the needful, no matter mm -hmm. whose ox is God. Okay. Okay, I mean, the time a, has come, and I, I pray, I pray it continues, a lot going, of things need to change. But let us we'll continue with that, let's start with that part. The, um, Supreme Court. Now, finally, the chairman of the, and uh, chief executive of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, retired Brigadier General Buba Marwa, has revealed that drugs are meant for insurgents, what six billion naira has been intercepted by the operatives of the agency at the Apapa port in Lagos. Marwa said loads of Captogon, and a brand of afitamine were intercepted by the agency. Now, I don't need to be told, yes, <laughs> when you, yes, if you see an average bandit and the way this Boko Haram people, the way they reason, the way they operate, you will know that there's no sane human being. Do you understand? There's no sane human being. When you go to the hospital and you are, um, you are abducting babies, abducting four or five years old kids, uh, you know, and you keep them in the bush, terrible condition for so long, you know that there's no milk of human compassion in these people and they will need this thing to eat whatever they are doing. So they are heavily on drugs. This is the, what um, NDLA, they've established even before now, before this interception. Well, you, you, you even regular beverage that we take, <laughs> you know, if you take your lager or something, you know, you, you get a little bolder, not to talk of this kind of thing. And uh, it's been said that... Okay, what's it, it, it was concealed in yeah. motor parts. Yes, it's been said that these things are manufactured in the theater of war in the Middle East in hmm. Asia hmm. to be like a motivator hmm. for their commanders and their soldiers to fight. Hmm. Do you understand? So it's, 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 another, it's a, another weapon of war. You, if you like chemical war, if you like, you know. So it, it, it helps to motivate them hmm. and they don't care, they are not afraid, they don't think twice. So this is the captor gun? Yeah. A brand to, of to, to, They mm. don't care. Mm. They are not worried in, to, to take any action based on when they are under the influence of these uh, these um, these drugs. You know, and that's I I think about, I was about three or four weeks ago. I was in a meeting with um, Brigadier Marwa, and this was some of the things he was saying. And I was dumbfounded. I was just looking. It, so it look, It appears that in addition to providing them, because I've been asking, these helocs, these gun trucks, these ammo that these insurgents and bandits are using, who is selling it to them? Where are they getting the money? Now somebody is now financing drugs. This one is six billion now value, street value. We don't know what else has gone before. Six how much? Those are the people who are the sponsors we don't know, and we don't know how much about. has gone into that. So that tells you that drug, we are fighting not just insurgents, we are also fighting a drug war. And I think the NDLA needs a lot of assistance. Mm -hmm. Because ordinarily, Tony, apart from these terrorists and bandits, the way the drug addiction has permeated the mm. country, especially Scary. among our youths. Scary. It's terrible. It's scary. South, north, everywhere. People are heavily on drugs. Everybody is afraid. Parents don't know that their children, students. when they go to school, they get introduced to drugs and they do drugs. And some of them, they stay under the same roof with you. Mm -hmm. And you still don't know that. <laughs> you know, take drugs. Mm -hmm. And there are even websites you can go to, mm -hmm. there are things you can go to that you can order for these drugs. And, <sighs> you know, mm. it's, the, it's no, the influence of drugs. Drugs around the, system. the country now is terrible. So I understand they deliver it. Mm -hmm. You can, you can to order for to it. To the now. homes mm -hmm. now. Oh, See. look at the case yeah. of um, um, what's her name? 
the Atega Chidema, yeah. Chidema, they said the mm -hmm. uh, second mm -hmm. day. The, 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 the of course, it's home, home service now. Right. Home service is 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 scary, and um, I don't know. I think, but first and foremost, please allow me to doff my heart for Brigadier General Buba Mara yeah. for the fact that he came to NDLA. Yes, and we are seeing changes. That's leadership for me. That is leadership. There's the no other, there's no other we can the define it. Yeah. The agency was like they've been charming, yeah, they've been people also pretending over that agencies for years. We don't have stories about people being caught. It's on a daily basis. Just open your papers. Very you see people being caught every day. That tells you that we can get it right in this country. Mm. I tell you, if not for him, this would have said so true. That nobody course, will hear about course. it. You know many, it happens every day and it's every, ever ready. And I think he has given his officers mandate. And I think he has given them mandate that you must get to the bottom of this drug thing in Nigeria. Because it's everywhere. Second, primary school, secondary, uni of course, universities. It's a way to us. Uh, it's Tramadol. Yes. It's, I mean, it's crazy. They banned Tramadol and now we have other drugs. <laughs> other kind of drugs, and deliverables. It's very expensive, you, yeah. but people are still accessible. People are still, and they even do it, in, they do it, turn it into um, cakes and something like that. That you can once you take one, you you you, you, you can dose up for the whole of of. Yes, of, a lady of, was of, arrested. Week. A medical doctor I mean, was lady, actually yeah, arrested. Two days ago. She was baking. You know, um, she's yes. a, 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 a baker. Yeah, so so she exactly she it. specializes in baking in cakes mixed with yes. exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's crazy. So I think they call it erimoseleke. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> is that is the name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, there's Erimo cigar. And okay. then they now say, they mix it up and then they say it's Erimo Seleke. So kick mixed with Erimo. It's dangerous. I, I pray for Nigeria. Look at Shorten. Thank, thank you for Nigeria. your contribution. Thanks very thank much, Ayo. That's as well with our country. Tony Wachi, it's been a while. Thank you so much, Ayo. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, and that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. You can watch the repeat broadcast tonight at 11. And don't forget to join us on Sunday for our special edition. That's 120 minutes of journalist hangout between 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. on DSTV 418, GoTV 45. It's not going to be on our terrestrial station, but all our satellite stations are going to be there on Sunday. Two hours of journalist hangout. Just tell everybody. Make it a date, 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. on Sunday. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash News Nigeria. I'm Ayodili Uzuwakun. Bye for now and see you on Sunday by 1.30.